All right, in this video, we're going to go over the concept of a geometric probability. Okay, so before going over exactly what a geometric probability is, we have to understand in what scenario are we allowed to calculate a geometric probability. And for that, that scenario is what we call a Bernoulli trial. So what has to happen for a Bernoulli trial? Well, there's three kind of key components, three criteria that we need for a Bernoulli trial. Uh, what we need is that each trial run must be independent. So that means every time we do this uh, experiment, every time we do this uh, probability experiment, we need to have an independent run, meaning what the previous trial did does not affect the likelihood of the next trial. Um, also, there can only be two outcomes, and we call those outcomes success or failure. So for it to be Bernoulli, there's only two things going to happen, either success or failure. Um, as we get into some examples, I'll show you how to figure out what success. Success is defined in the problem. Uh, and then also there must be a fixed number of trials, meaning there's a certain number of times we're going to do this experiment before we actually start it. So uh, you can't change the number of trials as you're in the midst of the experiment. So if those three conditions are met, you have a Bernoulli experiment or a Bernoulli trial. Um, if any one of those three are violated, you do not have a Bernoulli trial. All right, so what exactly is a geometric probability? Well, a geometric probability calculates the probability of having the first success in X number of trials. So anytime the question asks you, hey, what's the probability that the first blank happens in five trials? It's a geometric situation. So geometric probability is for your first success, the first success. Um, and so what we're going to have here is uh, some symbols that I want to go over. So P, a lowercase p, we're going to use that to denote the probability of success. Very important. Lowercase p, probability of success. Uh, as I told you, there's two things that can happen with the Bernoulli trial and a geometric probability, success or failure. So how do we get the failure rate or the failure probability, which is denoted by the letter Q? We do 1 minus P. Then lastly, the random variable x represents the number of trials until the first success. All right, so how does this work? So here is the formula. I know it looks daunting at first, but we'll go through it. Uh, so the probability that your first success occurs in x number of trials. So when we do an actual problem, this x will actually be a number. The lowercase x will actually be a number. So uh, what happens? Well, what we need to do is since I'm only looking for one success in these amount of trials, what I need is a certain number of failures. So for a real quick example, if I have five trials and I want to know and I want to know what's the probability of the first success, being on the fifth trial, let's think about what that means. That means that I need the first four to be failures. First four need to be failures, and then the fifth needs to be a success, right? Well, if you remember our, prob our multiplication rule, remember how we just multiply all those probabilities together? So that's what the formula is saying. The formula is saying is that you need the first x minus 1 trials to be failures, right? So if I have five trials, I need the first four to be failures. So 5 minus 1 is 4. That's why you take your failure rate, raise it to the number of failures that you need, and then you're going to raise p to the first power because you only need that first success. So I hope that formula makes a little bit of sense. We will practice more with it in just a second. All right, and also, um, as we talked about in previous videos, the mean is also referred to as the expected value. So there may be questions where you're asked, what's the expected number of trials before you get your first success? Well, that is found by taking 1 divided by P, your success rate. And then also we see that the standard deviation is calculated by taking the square root of Q, which is 1 minus P, and dividing it by P. So 
What I'm just showing you here in these two formulas for the standard deviations is I just replace Q with its formula 1 minus P there. All right, we're going to see all of these formulas in action here. For example, people with O negative blood are called universal donors since their blood can be given to anyone. Suppose there is a 6% chance that someone has O negative blood. Assume that 20 people randomly line up to give blood as donors. Okay, how many people do we expect to check before we find the first person with O negative blood? Okay, so when it comes to these probability questions, the first thing I like to do is I like to define what I mean by success. For these questions, success will be defined as someone has O negative blood. Okay, someone has O negative blood. And so then my, my, uh, P, my lowercase p, which is the probability of success, will be the probability that somebody has O negative blood, and they tell us that 6%, which I'm going to write as a decimal, as 0 0.06. Okay, so I highly recommend go ahead and that be your first kind of uh, step to do there. To write down what you mean by success and write down your value for P. So now they want, us to, they want us to calculate or figure out how many people do we expect to check. Well, the key word here is expect, a.k.a. expected value, which is the same thing as the mean. And I'm writing that Greek letter mu there, that U with the long front tail. All right, from earlier, we saw that the formula was mu is equal to 1 divided by p. You're probably a success. So for us, that's going to be 1 divided by a 0 0.06. And let's go to our calculator. I do 1 divided by 0 0.06. And I get 16.67. Okay. Okay. Surrounding so that to the nearest to the uh, to the nearest whole number, rounding correctly normally, uh, what we what this means is that we expect to check about seventeen people uh, before we get our first get the first O negative blood donor. Okay, that's what expected value means. We expect to check about 17 people before we get that first success of a person having O negative blood. All right. Okay, let's keep it moving. Part B, same information from before. What is the probability that the first donor with O negative blood occurs within the fourth donor? So what's the probability that in that line of 20, that fourth person that we check is the first person that has O negative blood? Well, as we've done in um, previous sections, previous videos, I like to convert that statement to probability notation. Big P means probability. We're trying to figure out the probability that X, remember X represents the number of trials it takes us to get to that first success. We're trying to figure out that the probability that X is equal to four. We want that first success to occur on the fourth trial. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate this two different ways. I'm going to show you how to use this via the formula, and then I'm going to show you how to use this via uh, stat crunch, a little bit of technology. OK, so if I need my first success to occur on the fourth donor, what that means is that I need the first three people to be uh, to not have o, o negative blood. Right. So if, if you remember, we said that P was 6%. 6% of people have O negative blood. So that means that Q, the failure rate, is 1 minus 0 0.06, right? If 6% of people have it, that means that 94% don't have it. Well, I need that to occur with the first three people. So this is where the formula says, oh, you take your failure rate and raise it to this number minus one. This is why we're raising it to the third power. Because what I need is I need those first three people 
to not have it. So I'm multiplying, remember the multiplication rule, I'm multiplying those probabilities together. And then I need to multiply that by that fourth person having it, and there's a 6% chance that the fourth person has it. So that's what that formula, that geometric formula is telling us. So we take a 0.94 to the third power times a 0.06. Point nine four raised to the third times. Ooh, let's do that again. Zero point nine four raised to the third. Let me come down. Times a zero point zero six, and we get an answer to. Let's go three decimal places. So it's a point zero four nine eight. At eight's when I change that forty nine to a fifty. So there we go. There is a point zero five percent chance, or excuse me, there's a point zero five a.k.a. 5% chance that that first success occurs with the fourth donor. Let me show you how to get the exact same answer using StatCrunch, okay? But the first step, whether you use StatCrunch or not, is to correctly come up with this probability notation, okay? So it's the probability that x equals 4. That's going to be very important. So how do we get to StatCrunch? In case you forgot, if you're in a problem... And if you don't see a stack crunch bottom, uh, button at, located towards the bottom in blue, click the Get More Help button, and you should see an option for stack crunch. Let it load up. And we need to get to our geometric calculator. So to get to the geometric calculator, if you look at those uh, menus in the top left where it says Stat Crunch Applets Edit Data Stat, click on Stat. And then we want to go to Calculators. And there we have our list of calculators in uh, alphabetical order. We want geometric. All right, so very important. When it comes to these geometric calculators, you actually have two options. You can base it off of the number of failures or the number of trials. Very important. We are only going to work with the calculator that is based on the number of trials. Always, always use the number of trials for my course. All right, so we go to number of trials, okay? Um, and then now once we get here, the question becomes, what the heck are we looking at? So uh, what we're trying to calculate is the probability that uh, X is equal to four, right? That we have four trials before our first success. Uh, first of all, make sure you're, you're in the standard. For this question, make sure you're in the standard geometric calculator. You can see me pressing it, hopefully, in this top left corner. Make sure you're in standard. All right, down towards the bottom is the interesting stuff where we need to plug in stuff. P, it needs to know what's the probability of your success. Okay? So to change that, I'm going to click on it. Hopefully it works. No? Let's do it this way. I can scribble it out. So you want to erase that, and you want to type in a 0 0.06. All right? You're going to type in 0 0.06 for P. Next. This is why that probability notation is important. The calculator now needs to know, okay, what are you trying to calculate? So you see our inequality where it's, it's a less than or equal to? It kind of defaults to that. So if you click on that, we have options. And we want to select the equals to option because we want to know what's the probability that it happens in the fourth trial. It equals two. And then our three, we need to delete that out and change that to four. We compute that, and as you see, folks, we get the exact same answer, 0 0.04983504, which if we round that to three decimal places, you get a 0 0.050. So for the rest of these examples, I'm going to be using the stat crunch calculator. All right, let's move on. Um, what is the probability... That the uh, first O negative blood donor is found in one of the first four donors. Okay, so this one's a little different than the first one. The first one says, what happens if the, the first success is exactly on the fourth donor? This one is saying, hey, what's the probability that it happens on either the first donor, the second donor, the third donor, or the fourth donor? Any, any one of those. So what we could do is we could do, oh, let me take the probability that x equals, it's the first donor, plus is equal to the second donor, plus is equal to the third donor. 
plus is equal to, uh, we did the fourth one, all right? So we would have to redo that problem four different times and add up all those probabilities. We're not gonna do it this way. Instead, what we can do is we can say, hey, all of that equals the same thing, the probability that x is less than or equal to four. So this means the probability of one and two and three and four. And so this is going to actually make it a lot quicker for us than doing it the, by calculating four separate probabilities, okay? So keep in mind our probability of success is still that point, uh, 0.06, and just make sure we select the less than or equal to when we go to our calculator. So here we go. So in fact, as I scroll down here, our P is 0 0.06, we don't change that. We change our equals to, to a less than or equal to, and our four, let's keep that as a four, and there's our answer to three decimal places, a 0 0.2. Two one nine. So there's a 21.9% chance that that first success occurs within the first four donors, either one, the first donor, the second donor, the third donor, or the fourth donor. All right. Um, I'm going to throw in a bonus example here before we go to the next one. Um, another example. What's the probability that the first donor, or excuse me, what's the probability that the first O negative donor is the second or third donor? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is, if we wanted to do probability notation, this is the probability that x equals really like two or three, if we wanted to use that notation, right? And so I'm gonna show you a way of doing that in the calculator. So what we could do, one way says what we could do is we could say, once again, the probability of x equals two plus the probability of x equals three. We could certainly do that. Or a quicker option is this. There's an option in the calculator that we can go in between. And what I mean by that is we, if we select the probability that 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3, that does the exact same thing as adding both 2 and 3 together. And let me show you how to select that option. In the calculator, Right at the top, remember how we've been in standard this whole time in the top left where it says geometric calculator? If you select select the between option, that'll give you the option of going in between two different values. So we're gonna keep our probability as a 0 0.06. We're gonna keep our number of trials, the lower number if the left number of trials is two, the upper bound is going to be three. Okay, so type in a three there. We compute that. And then we get up 0 0.109. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that if you're asked to calculate, you know, just two of them, it may be a little quicker if you do that between option. All right, let's keep it moving. What is the probability that it takes more than eight donors before we find the first O negative blood donor? More than eight. So the key here, folks, is be careful with your... Uh, inequality, your probability notation. More than eight means this. It means the probability that X is strictly greater than eight. Not greater than or equal to, greater than eight. Okay? And what this means is if we wanted to do this by forcing it, is what I call it, that means, okay, so more than eight. More than eight, if you recall your inequalities, more than eight means like you're not at eight, you're at like 8.0000001. Well, I can't have a 0 0.00001 of a donor of a person, so the next whole number, the next number of people I can have that's more than eight is nine. So this means the probability that the first success is the ninth donor, 
plus the probability of success at the first, the probability that the first success is on the tenth donor, so on and so forth. Remember, there's twenty total donors. There's no way in the world we're going to add up all those probabilities. So how do we do this in a calculator? Very straightforward. But this time, uh, what was it? I was in the between, I believe. Okay, so let's get out of between. Let's go back to standard. If I'm not going between two values, I need to go to standard. All right, there we go. All right, my probability is still 0 0.06 of success. I select my inequality and I select the greater than. And then instead of four, we're going to put in an eight. We compute that, folks, and there we go. To three decimal places is a 0 0.6095, so a 0 0.610. All right, so I hope you're seeing how to use the, the stat crunch calculator. All right, last uh, example here is uh, I really wanted to ensure that you guys understand how to correctly define success. Okay, so we're gonna look at these two very related problems, excuse me, very much related problems, and you're gonna see how they both define success differently, thus you're gonna get different probabilities. So uh, for example, suppose that there's a 20% chance that a basketball player misses a free throw, okay? What's the probability that the player's first miss occurs on the fourth free throw attempt? So in the first example here, right, the first miss, that right there, miss, tells me what the success is. For this first problem here, success is defined as the basketball player missing the free throw. Therefore, P, the probability of success, the probability he misses, or she misses, is 0 0.20, 20%. Then the question is saying, what's the probability that the first miss occurs on the fourth free throw attempt? So that's why it's the probability that X equals four. And we will calculate that probability in just a second, but let's move on down to the second example related to this, right? So still 20% chance they miss a free throw. But now what's the probability that the player's first made free throw occurs on the fourth attempt? So this is also the probability that X equals four. But now what's success? Success is defined as the player making the free throw. So now what's that probability? Well, if there's a 20% chance that they miss it, it means that there's an 80% chance that they make it. How did I get that? You guys know the complement rule. 1 minus 0 0.20 is how I got the 0.80. So now, as you can see, these are very similar questions, but the P, the success rate, is different because success is defined differently in the two questions. As far as getting the answers, all we do is just chuck them into the calculator. So for the first question, P is 0.20, and we're trying to find the probability that X is equal to 4. All right, so I go to my calculator here. I go here. I'm going to change my P to a 0 0.20. I'm going to change that to an equals to, and I'm going to change my 8 to a 4. Calculate, and we get a 0 0.102. Go down to the second example. This time, the only thing that changes is that the P now, the success rate, is no longer 0 0.20. It is 0 0.80. And that is going to change our probability to a 0 0.006. All right, so I hope this helps you understand the difference between um, understanding how to define the success. And overall, I hope this video helps you understand geometric probabilities better. Hope to see you guys in the next video.